Hi, I'm Justin Boyd. And I'm Rob Filicetti. And we are the Watchers in the Basement. Welcome to the Watchers in the Basement today. Today we have a special episode. That's right. We're celebrating National Spider-Man Day. And, you know, uh, Rob is in my favorite band of all time, Bowling for Soup. I thought, what a perfect way to have uh, one of my favorite, you know, members of a band come on the show. And I know you're a big Spider-Man fan. So, uh, so Rob, uh, thanks for being here. How are you doing today? I'm well, how are you? Doing good. I'm looking forward to this uh, conversation because, uh, yeah, it should be good. Well, actually, which is funny because I was a guest on your other show yes, you that's were. with Jason and it's yep. more centered on music and artists and all that. And, uh, we ended up spending about 30% of that talking about Spider-Man. So we this did. is a more appropriate, uh, venue for the conversation. Exactly. And, uh, for those of you out here out there, you might be wondering like, why today? Why is today Spider-Man day? Well, August 1st is National Spider-Man Day because the character made its first appearance in August on August 1st, 1961. 1962. Oh, you're right. 1962. You're right. 1962. He, the, the character is 61 years old. That's what I, I yeah. missed my numbers. But yeah. Honest mistake. Yeah. August 1st, 1962. If you're watching us down on YouTube or later on YouTube, you can see there's the, the first ever uh, Spider-Man appearance in Amazing Fantasy number 15. It was uh, written by Stan Lee, drawn by Steve Ditko. Uh, Rob, obviously, you knew more about this than I do. Do you <laughs> do you have a copy of this comic, or do you have this image somewhere, like in a like framed or something? I'm not a multimillionaire, so I don't have a <laughs> I don't have a <laughs> copy of the comic. I do have a print, a really big print okay. of it, and uh, actually, in like we have like a it's like a dining room slash kind of a bar lounge. So it's like kind of a bigger room. So if it was just a dining room, I'd never think of putting that up there. And I don't think right. my wife would let me, she probably would. But, um, the fact that it's also coupled with this sort of bar and lounge area, it gives me a little more Liberty to put up cool things in there. Right. So I have like flanked on either side of the bar there. There's probably like a, it's like a, maybe a 40 inch print of a wow. amazing fantasy 15 on one side. And it's actually, that's the last uh, issue of Amazing Fantasy. So they were that that actual comic run they they like ran up. You know, you know this. I'm sure you do. But, well, then it became Amazing Spider-Man, right? Well, Eventually. so that's yeah. kind of that's basically how it went. But Amazing Fantasy was just like this series of different stories, obviously that would introduce a new character each time. And the I, I guess it was just like its run was up at number 15, and they put out Spider-Man. And then it was done. It was done, but people wanted more Spider-Man, so that's what drove them to do. It. And that's why they took the amazing from it to make it called the Amazing Spider-Man. That's why that comic series is called that. So yeah, which brings me to the other side. So I have Amazing Fantasy fifteen on one side, and then the other side is Amazing Spider-Man number one, which was I think May of nineteen sixty-three. Okay. Pretty sure, but I know it was less than a year. It was the next year, but it was less than a year since Amazing Fantasy 15 came out. Yeah, it was. I mean, Spider Man became an instant, you know, success and and a very popular character. And now today, for many years, Spider Man has been widely regarded as the most popular character, the most popular superhero of all of them. So, yeah, um, and I I would guess to say, adventure guess that he's he's your favorite, right? Yes, I mean, <laughs> yeah. By by a long shot. I mean, I, it's it's pretty much the first, and that's the thing though. So, I I'm very like with things that I like. I don't I I get I don't dive totally in. Like, there's a lot of Spider Man that I don't give a shit about. Okay. You know, like just in general. Like I I'm the biggest fan of just like the core basic story of it, and when that's been redone through comics and uh, cartoons and movies. But selectively, I'm kind of an ass about that. Okay. Um, just for the like, just because like I think it's the the iconic like '60s look is the coolest, obviously. And it's just like it's just neat that that like how that's it's how it started. It was really like this underdog thing that they didn't think anything was going to come of it, and then it became like you said today. It's probably one of the most popular superheroes of all time. But um, I couldn't. I could go pretty good on some like trivia on it. But if someone were to craft some spider-man trivia about all of it I, I might fall short on a lot of that stuff well i mean I, I love so much there's so much yeah i mean that and like 
even like you say, you're just kind of focused on the classic Spider-Man. Yeah. There's so much, I mean, you know, 61 years of that character and, you know, he has so many uh, villains and the, the rogues gallery of characters. And that's part of what makes Spider-Man great. There's just- even with Spider-Man himself, when it's when it starts branching out where it's like, now it's a dude named Ben Riley and Riley. Peter Parker was the clone the whole time. I'm like, it's right. getting, it gets muddied up, but I get it. Like you said, there's so many years they need to keep it interesting. So they made a lot of different stories. There's the spectacular Spider-Man. They redid the amazing Spider-Man. I think like, wasn't that like 20 years ago or something? They I just sort of so. restarted yeah. the comic series. There's yeah, Ultimate, there's a lot. Ultimate Spider-Man, which is kind of what the Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. Those movies were based on the Ultimate Spider-Man run. Oh, is that right? I don't yeah. think I even knew that. Which was like from 2000 to 2009. So that that kind of that run ended in the comics, and they took that storyline and kind of took it to the screen to oh, start over after the Tobey Maguire movie. So yeah, um, we, I'm sure we'll get into the movies at some point. Oh yeah, we're going to talk heavily. Next, uh, <laughs> Forty-five yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go heavily into the movies because I. I have read some comics, but I am not a comic expert by any stretch of the imagination. I was going to ask you, did you grow up reading Spider-Man comics? Uh, yeah, but it was more like, it's kind of funny. So I grew up in the, most of my growing up was the nineties, you know, yep. late eighties, but most of it with my, like the stuff I was really getting into is like the the nineties. So like when I started collecting any of the comic books, like with my brother and my cousins, um, it was more about the cover art. I mean, that's really, which is yeah. crazy. There's like a whole thing with that, but I mean, there's the cover art is what sold it. The, the books themselves were actually usually kind of confusing or boring or, or, or uh, a lot of them, not all of them. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of great stuff there. I'm not talking Spider-Man comic books, but we'd always be looking for the cool, classic, amazing Spider-Man covers. Basically when we'd go to the comic shop and thumb through all the boxes when they don't know what they have and you find something really cool. I have a, I have the actual, an actual, um, like graded. It's at seven, I think, of a uh, two fifty two, the black costume. Okay, yeah. Uh, the one where it looks like Amazing Fantasy fifteen, but he's holding two people, and it's a right. black costume. That's over there somewhere. I have like a Spider Man shelf. Um, so the, uh, yeah, it was more about that. But I was a big fan of that nineties cartoon. That had the the intro was done by the dude from Aerosmith or whatever. Yeah, yeah, Joe <laughs> and, uh, uh, Joe Tyler is it? No, Joe yeah. Perry. Joe Perry. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Is right? That's who did that. Yeah. Um, and, and it was that I was. That's probably what really wrote me. And I always I had like a, this little tiny Spider Man action figure as a kid who was stuck in this pose because you put like these two strings on them and you can like send them down shit or whatever. And uh. I had a couple other ones that were more articulated and like some really old classic things from like the seventies that were just passed down, you know, and I just had this cool little collection of Spider-Man stuff. So that's why it was the first fictional character I ever really cared about. So by the time that comp, that cartoon came around and I was already collecting those comic covers, I was just like, well, I was sort of roped into that. Yeah. And and also like, I, this is something I, I've talked to this about this before, but uh, I mean, Spider-Man means a lot to you and also, partially because you're from Queens, just like Spider-Man, right? That's right. And that has a lot to do with it. And it's, it really does because it, you know, when you're a kid, you think everyone's where you're from. You think that's where everybody's from. Yeah. So I just didn't really occur to me much. I was like, Oh, it's another kid from Queens. Right. And he was always marketed as, as being a teenager. Like that was a big part of the push, right? He's the first superhero that wasn't like some rich loaded dude. Right. You know, or, or, or like well off guy. Yeah, it wasn't like a Batman or like a, just a regular dude like Clark Kent was. Even though he's an yeah, alien, he's not an alien. He's not a rich guy. He's not. Yeah, not he's a, none a, of yes, a god from another world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. he's none of the above. He's just a kid, and he's like from Queens who gets picked on, and it's the whole. What was the whole thing? He wanted him to be relatable to the people that were buying the comic books. Yeah. So it's you know I can't believe it took them that long to think of that, <laughs> but it worked out well. Yeah, he gets yeah. bit by a radioactive spider and. We're off and running. Yeah. <laughs> Who hasn't? But <laughs> yeah, it's so he's from uh Forest Hills, Queens, I think. Okay. So it's that's a few towns over from where I'm from. So yeah, that that had to be cool growing up. Like because like I'm from West Texas where there, there's no superheroes <laughs> from West Texas, like small towns there. So <laughs> like to be to see, you know, the this character that you love from your hometown. Actually, it, on that, remember that show uh 
Heroes. I don't remember what network it was on. This is from like 20 NBC. Yeah, I think. it was on NBC. I never watched it though, but I remember. Okay, it, it was yeah. actually pretty. The first like couple seasons are pretty decent. Or first season, I think there's only two or three. Okay, first season is really good. But like the main character is this girl from Odessa, Texas. Oh, from Odessa. Okay, it was like the only super powered <laughs> person from from like middle Texas. of nowhere, Texas. <laughs> like who goes oh, to and, Odessa? And she was a cheerleader, right? Because she was like, yes, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm it's, sure for like Odessa Permium, like high school or something. It was probably yeah. part of like Friday Night Lights. Yeah, right. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's it was cool. I mean, it's again, he had that Spider Man has that going for him. He's from New York City, at least, because yeah. his character wouldn't make sense in most other places. Yeah, like what he does, right? I mean, it's obviously written that way, but he wouldn't work so well where I live in the Poconos in Pennsylvania, right? Or or in West Texas where there's yeah. no buildings that you can like, you know, <laughs> shoot your web sling. You know, you can't fly, you know, swing around the the city or town or whatever. If it's cool to... how they sort of address that in in what I think is the best iteration of Spider Man in his, in his first standalone movie in Spider Man Homecoming, mm-hmm. um, which is the first. Not the first movie that Tom Holland portrays Spider Man, but it's his first own movie where it's like he's right. the he's the guy. Um, but none of that movie really takes place of him like cruising around Manhattan, you know, flying around and stuff. Where there's a couple things where he's out in Queens and he's got to like chase a car down and he's he's like he's crafty. He can't swing from tree. He's like jumping over roofs and into people's lawns and actually on foot the whole time. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. That's one of the, that's what I love the most about the MCU's take on Spider-Man is that they got creative with it for once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you think it was, I mean, I, obviously they've done very well. The MCU is, you know, the biggest movie franchise ever, but do you think, because we already had Spider-Man, you had two of the versions, like they kind of had to be different and they wanted to weave him into the MCU. Yeah. I think it was like, you're right. It was very creative, but I, I like I like what they did. Cause I know there's some people out there who, they don't like the MCU version of Spider-Man because it like he's like uh, you know, Tony Stark is his like you know he's like a, a Robin to Tony Stark's Batman. Whereas I like him having a mentor who's also the main character of the MCU. You know? I'm kind of, I'm with you on that for a couple yeah. reasons. So um, I think a lot of the people that hate on just in general hate on Tom Holland as Spider-Man. It's just because like it's it's cooler to like the old stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's yeah. like anything. Like it's all uh, this is new. So it's not as cool as the old stuff, even though the old stuff is not as good. So, right. um, the whole Tony Stark mentor thing, I think, is cool because they're like making it a little more practical, in my in my opinion, where where he would have all these awesome things that he uses to be Spider Man, and it's cool how they've stripped it down now after he's had the experience of all that, like how the story's gotten at this point, how he's got nothing now. Yeah. So he's got to he has to use his smart but his experience and what he's learned over the years but um it was more about that like him having that cool suit which great because the eyes emote which is the first time they ever did that which does a whole lot because that's how a lot of that in the comic books and cartoons was you know his eyes going from big to small yeah how do you make that practically with a 15 year old from queens who has no money so like he's got this multi-million dollar suit that looks like the classic spider-man suit that does all the cool things um, and then on top of that, the f- like he would look up to that dude. You know what I mean? He's a kid. Like exactly. he would need somebody to sort of guide him through that. And I think that's the perfect yeah. relationship, for that. especially in this big integrated world. They're going like where all the comics would cross into each other. That's what the MCU is going for. Like it's it's not each the standalone tales where they like sort of would maybe like of course all these people are going to cross paths and do stuff together like it's yeah. it's world ending stuff so they kind of who would you go for to. right yeah the guy that the guy that can summon lightning from the sky is gonna you know what i mean like you're gonna get a you're gonna rally yeah no and, and i think with with tom holland spider-man even though like toby mcguire and andrew garfield like their characters basically start in the same place they're all like you know beginning of high school in high school but the difference with Tom Holland is he actually looks like a high schooler. Whereas I'm so glad two, you're yeah, done with that. <laughs> they're both like in their, they both look like they're in their twenties because they are in their twenties, you know, well, like Andrew Garfield more. So looks, a li- looks a little more the part. Cause I, yeah, I've seen, you know, he's just tall and lanky and he's got, I mean, he, right. Right. Maybe some, but Toby Maguire at no point, I think he was like 29 when they did that. And he does not look like he's supposed to be, I guess in that one, they're seniors. So he's supposed to be like 17 or 18 or whatever. Right. Doesn't look like, to me. Um, 
so yeah, Tom Holland was, I think was 18 when they shot the first thing with him and he looks like it and he looks younger than that, which yeah. he's supposed to be. I think he's, he enters the movies at like 14 or something. Right. Like that's the yeah. age they, they've yeah, got. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At 14. Yeah. When he comes in in uh, captain America civil war, he's 14. yeah. Yeah. He's like ninth or 10th grade or something, which yeah. is, is right on with what it's supposed to be, which is the whole point, like a huge point of the character, right? Like you want, yeah. That's what makes him different than everybody else. That he's not this grown ass dude. We, you know, as we went over. Yeah. No. I. I mean, it's it's perfect casting, and for that to work. Um, and also, he was kind of an unknown, you know. Whereas, yeah. Obviously, Tobey Maguire wasn't unknown. Andrew Garfield, I guess, if you saw like the Social Network, he was he was in that movie, the movie about Facebook. But oh yeah, it's actually great. And that's the thing. All three dudes that have played Spider Man are awesome actors in everything. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because it's like. I have this like unpopular opinion about the other ones, but Tobey Maguire should never have been cast as a likable teenager because in my opinion and stuff I've seen him in his strengths as an actor are like intense. And like sometimes like there's this movie where he plays this like psychotic dude who's like losing it. And it's like this great performance. And it's like, wow, he's really good at that. He's not likable as Peter Parker. You know, he's like, and the, it's not his fault entirely because directing is by a dude who did Army of Darkness, like the right. campiest horror movie of all time, which is great in its own way, but it's just like an odd choice to direct a Spider-Man film, right? Um, and, and then the Andrew Garfield thing, they went to like like Twilight with it. You know what I mean? Like the, the love story, which is fine. Yeah. It's all part of it, but it's like, it, it's too serious but then it's so silly right it's supposed to be this they're trying to make i guess i'm gonna go off on a tangent here but yeah <laughs> well the toby mcguire ones with with the uh the sam raimi's ones i should say where toby mcguire plays peter parker it's like he's trying to make it look like a comic book but it's just the acting is bizarre like they're it's not the actor's fault it's the direction right but yeah. the lines they're saying are like lines that people would never say to each other he starts like reciting poetry to mj at one point <laughs> it's like it's just nothing that a, that a college kid would do well but doc ock told him that's the way to do it though. oh i know but like <laughs> even him like alfred Molina is a great actor but like yeah. he's just like doc ock is ridiculous and that oh everyone knows of those three that second one's the best of those yes by far i'd say that's a pretty popular opinion yes yeah. but with like amazing spider-man with with andrew garfield um they like he's he acts more like a teenager the dialogue between people seems a little more real and natural like people humans would talk to each other um they rehash the whole uncle ben thing again like so that's the problem with that movie they sort of just like they're trying to act like people forgot about the other one so they didn't really try anything different yeah um except for the the like tone of the movie but it's in juxtaposition of this ridiculous looking lizard man, like trying to turn people into reptiles. You know what I mean? Like the plot's so silly, but they're trying to be yeah. serious. So that's where that one falls flat. And then the second one might be the worst movie of all time besides like the Phantom Menace or something, but really? So uh, do you think, do you think amazing Spider-Man two is worse than Spider-Man three from Tobey Maguire and Sam Raimi to say, to agree, to say yes, would imply that I give Spider-Man three any credit at all. As okay. A movie? Um, and it's, it's lazy to say, oh, they're equally as bad. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you, really I, think, to... I think amazing Spider-Man two is better, but I, I think only because it... Spider-Man three has so much, it's so overstuffed with villains and oh, it's yeah. just too much. It's well, even too... Sam Raimi himself said like, he didn't want to do the villain thing, do that. but he was sort of pushed into it. And he said, right. he even admitted, he's like, I don't understand this character. Yeah. And was, All right. You should have pushed back a little harder then. Cause it clearly shows you didn't understand this character. <laughs> Or anything, yeah. for that matter. That movie is ridiculous. Like it's 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 never stop. It, it's kind of like that's what I compared um, the whatever I forget what it's called because I get the names all mixed up. But the most recent, the last so, of the Star Wars movies, yeah, um, the the Rise um, of Skywalker. Yes, that terrible movie. movie. Oh, terrible. it's awful. Yeah, but yeah. I compare it to in the way where like that movie from start to end, you don't get a break to breathe and process right. anything that's going on. It's just shit just keeps getting thrown at you the entire time. And that's what Spider-Man three is like, like it's yeah. nonstop and it's awful and it's terrible. And, <laughs> and like, it's just cluttered. But amazing Spider-Man two is terrible because they just, they're, tr it seems like they're trying to rush into things too. Like with the, the green goblin, yeah. Like well, he, this kid, you know, it, what I always said about if that kid, 
if Harry Osborn in Amazing Spider-Man 2, if he wasn't told that he had a genetic illness, right. he would have never gotten sick. <laughs> no, if you I, notice, it only starts yeah. affecting him at all until he's told that it's part of his like bloodline or something. Then he gets all yeah whatever is happening to him scabby and green and whatever <laughs> he literally comes back because his dad norman osborne has died from the same genetic disorder right and then he's now he, now it's like his company he's back from he went to college in london or something yeah, they really overseas. breezed over that so quickly that i yeah. completely forgot and then literally the next day he's like telling peter like i need to talk to spider-man because i'm dying <laughs> You're, it, it happens so fast. And That's it's like, what I'm saying. It's like, I feel yeah. it's almost like writing wise. If he was never yeah. told that he'd be right. totally fine. <laughs> yeah. He would have been good. Like, yeah, hey, I'm rich. I got this company. Like, yeah, everything's things are great. Good. Yeah. Everything's, everything's great. Totally great. Like, oh, and then with, um, uh, why can't Jamie Foxx as yeah, Electro Jamie, Electro, right. like what he's a great actor and everything he's in, except the amazing Spider-Man too. He's yeah. ridiculous. He's it's, it, it, but they, he acts, and it's ironic to say this. He's like a cartoon character because they are cartoon characters, right? But that the movie's going for a more serious thing, so it seems absurd, like how how he turns into this. And when he be- <laughs> everyone always has all these Bluetooth things in their ears whenever they become like super villains, and he's got he's got the suit, and he's got all the stuff, and it's all from Oscorp, and they're just like it's all lazy writing to me. Like whenever there's a millionaire in the mix, they're just everyone just defaults to that to go. Here's how we do everything. And I get, yeah. I know that goes against what I was saying earlier with Peter Parker getting the suit, but that sort of built up over the, the Tony Stark of, was established over, you know, there you go. That's, before that's, Spider Man comes into the picture, we've had Iron Man for right. almost 10 years, He's you know, been eight, like nine a, years. An international right. icon for years. Right. And it, it just would make sense that if you're starting Peter Parker as a 14, 15 year old, like, he, you're right. He's going to look up to the Avengers who have already been on the scene and everyone knows who they are. And yeah, like, it's, he can't, it's not like he'd never heard of them. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Especially for someone like him who wants to like work for newspapers or which, yeah. I guess with, with Tom Holland, we don't really have that yet as far as, yeah, but again, he's still, he's, or what, yeah, yeah they've sort of set up because now it's like, it's, there's um, the way it, his story is left right now. Right. They can do whatever they want with it. Like it's, exactly. it's, it's a reset button. Yeah, which is kind of cool, but with with having all the experience he's had, right? So I think they're going to sort of now start a semi similar story to, to what the other guys went through. You know what I mean? And it almost exactly. makes sense where they're like, because now he's starting off on this foot, and he's like, however old he's supposed to be. He's, I think he's still like eighteen or something. He's he's exactly. just about to story. graduate high, or he did he, right at the end of the thing. He's got like a GED book or something like that, right? Um, because no one knows. I, that whole thing like the peter parker doesn't exist anymore it there's a couple things i think they need to figure out how to loophole but i think they'll they'll write themselves out of it they're pretty good at that yeah no but you're right it is like a reset where they can kind of go in any direction and it's yeah it's it, it is really smart i i am wondering like when we're going to get that direction though because it with with the writer's strike and now the actor's strike and yeah you know, it's it's not like I don't think we're going to see a Spider-Man movie until 2026 at the earliest, maybe like maybe yeah. late 2025. If, if everything were to like fall into place tomorrow, yeah. like it's it's still going to be a while. I know they started it. Well, they started like for like pre-production or whatever. Yeah, you know, that's but, what like, I mean. Like, yeah. I don't think no, no, I don't think there were filming things happening. Yeah, but right. It's in this day and age, I guess that literally they can make anything happen that they want to. Right. whenever they do get back to work. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm hopeful that it's going to continue as good as it's been going. Cause you know, Spider-Man in 2002, and I remember seeing those commercials on TV when it was coming out, like, wow, okay, this is the not first live action Spider-Man, but let's consider it the first, because before that was that ridiculous show that had like one season in the seventies with the dude who, again, who was supposed to be a college student, but he looked like he was 48. Yeah. Um, right. you know what I'm talking about? Well, I guess everyone, yeah, I for some reason in the seventies, everyone looked like that, but right. It, no, um, you're right. Yeah. 28 year old look, looked like he was 45. Yeah. yeah. But that one where he like, he, where he works as like a lab tech, you know which one I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. It's I like, do. Wasn't yeah. it just called like, it was just called like Spider-Man. They just called like Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was the Japanese one where he's an alien from outer space and he uses a belt and he gets in that big, you ever seen that one? That one's absurd. I saw like there's a there's a, like a little bit of a documentary like, like an episode on Disney Plus about 
the Japanese Spider-Man. So I saw that, but I've never actually seen anything besides like they just like made a- up a whole other story. He's a Japanese yeah. dude named something else, and he's an alien. <laughs> but he looks like uh, Spider-Man. Yeah. But yeah, he's dressed like him. Yeah. Um, do you know his the first ever actual live action appearance of Spider-Man? First ever live action. I don't. Okay, so there is that. It's it's in the seventies, mm. and it was just on a TV show called The Electric Company. Oh, and he was just like a okay. cameo, okay. on like in like a bit. It was basically it. it was just a guy <laughs> in a shitty Spider-Man suit um, doing like a, I don't even remember what it was, just like a little bit. And that was really it. And then after the the live action show, which I think happened around the same time as the Hulk. Yeah, I was about to say. I wonder if there's ever a crossover because I did they, watch the Hulk. No, Okay. Didn't, uh, me too. They never crossed them over because back then it would be so hard to do that stuff. Thor was on the Hulk though. Briefly. Thor was, yeah, yeah. like fights him in a lake or something, yeah. like throws a bear. Or <laughs> um, yeah, so then there was really nothing. Like there was no live action version of it. I, you couldn't really see anything except for the there's the cartoon where he's like best friends with the Human Torch for some reason mm-hmm. from like the 80s, I think. And then uh, that was like Spider Man and his amazing friends, I think. Yep. And then the '90s, it's like the uh, the Spider-Man cartoon, the '90s came out, and that was the most like comic accurate one at that point. I mean, they started it off different. They, you know, they didn't, it, but it's about the same story. Like it's obviously heavily based on the comics, mm-hmm. and it feels more like it looks more like a comic book. Animation was a thousand times better than it was even ten years before that. So it's this look looking. I think the first villain on that show, if I'm not wrong, is the Lizard. I can't remember if that's it or not. It's also on Disney Plus. I did check it out a couple of years back just to like see. Oh, it, it is. Held up. Yeah, it's. I wow. think all of that stuff is all, all wow. the stuff we've kind of talked, except for that electric show, electric. Company, yeah, whatever sure. Yeah, that's not. But uh, but all I'll those uh, watch. those early animated all that stuff is on Disney Plus because there's a lot of Spider Man. You're right. You're right. Before we got the 2002 movie with Tobey Maguire, there was a lot of Spider Man stuff. Well, then that there. so that's kind of what I was getting at is that. Yeah. The, the 90s was sort of dominated with Spider-Man wise by that cartoon. Even the comic books took a halt then. Yeah. You, well, most comic books did. They weren't popular anymore by the time like the early 90s came around. So um, that show was like, that was it. And that's probably why it like had my focus so much like on yeah. it. And it had like this awesome line of action figures. <laughs> they knew what they were doing. Yeah. And then, so then by the time it was done, it's only a couple of years after when I remember seeing the trailer for Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. And that trailer is like done perfectly. You see just enough of him. There's a lot of cool stuff. So, you know, that movie came out. I had, I was uh, 16 or something like that. And I had no choice but to love it. And by that, what I mean is it was the only option of anything that looked that cool. And it kind of looked like the cartoon. It was really colorful. Yeah. You know, and, and I guess when you're 16, you're not like, you're looking for something different in a movie than when you're like in a full ass adult. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So at the time that movie did everything I needed it to. It, it looked great. The costume looked cool. It didn't make any sense that he could make that, but it didn't matter. Yeah. Um, it, it's really it's really, like looking back on it, it's super campy. Actually, the other day, Jarrett and I were in a hotel and like I was just flipping through channels and it was on. I'm like, I haven't seen this in so long and turned it on. I'm like, yep, this is exactly what I remember it. <laughs> like the last time I saw it, probably 10 years ago. I still so, think it's great though. Cause like for me, like I'm a little bit older than you, but like I remember like we, you know, growing up, superhero movies, we had Superman movies, which I, I, I like Superman a lot, but the first two are okay. The other the second <laughs> two are terrible. Yeah, you, I even honestly, I know that. <laughs> 89 Batman was great. Yeah. And then Batman as it continued kind of trailed off, of course. So um, but that's a that's a, a great example though of yeah. a of an odd choice for director doing it awesome with it. Like Tim right. Burton. You know what I mean? Like a, a, a weird, campy movie director doing Batman, and it came out awesome. So yeah. that's what they're going for, I think, when they did when they chose Sam Raimi to do it. Yeah. No, I still think that the first, I think the first two are real, are still good movies. I, I mean, not, they're not like, I mean, when you compare them to what we got with the MCU and Tom Holland, those movies, it's they don't they don't compare with those. But I still think they hold up okay, and I still think um, that Tobey Maguire's Spider Man suit. It's still my favorite one in the movies. Like it's so I know it's so simple, but it's like it's very um I don't know, it's very like textured and very designed. I don't know. I like the design of that one 
I mean, the color is not maybe my favorite, but I do like the look of that suit. What's your favorite Spider-Man suit in the movies? Well, I, this is like a, it's, it's, it's my honest answer. I'm not just saying this. It is, it's the end of no way home. Oh, okay. when Peter first right. makes his, like a, a real attempt at his Spider-Man suit. I think right. it's the coolest looking one. Um, I'm missing, I miss the, the back spider that he has on the Tony suit Stark made suit, okay. the classic yeah. round one. But right. again, this comes back to me loving the classic stuff so much. Yeah. But that one's more like a, that's not even a Ditko one. That's more like a uh, Ramita Jr. Like style. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The colors, like the really bright blue. Yeah, right. And the, even the right. way the eyes look, because they're sort of what they've looked like so far in the MCU versions. But the Raimi one is like, no matter what he's doing, unless it's CGI, he just looks so uncomfortable and stiff. That's what I don't like about it. And it's like his neck always looks like really weird and sick. And like, it's just like, it's just the way it makes his body look looks absurd to me. Like, and, it, and maybe it's just his body shape, but like right. his arms are look really short in it, you know? Like, that's what I don't like about it is that it just doesn't, when he's standing there and it's the actual guy in the actual suit, it doesn't look like he could possibly do the stuff that Spider Man does. Because then when they CGI that and he's flipping around and right, agile, right. but when he's actually standing there, you can't even believe that that's the same person. That's what I don't like about the suit. And I don't like the eyes either, they're too pointy. But that's like a different style. They're going for an angular thing, right? Yeah. It's kind of like they're like triangles. Yeah. Um, I the Andrew Garfield one for the first movie, I like that they tried something different. They just it just his eyes are yellow and it's, everything's really well. He has like the sunglasses lens. Yeah. yeah, and it is cool how it's like he kind of bought it in a catalog and just like right. changed it up. You know, yeah, I like that. Um, <clears throat> it just and the, and the the one after. The Amazing Spider-Man Two. That's what a lot of people always say their favorite one is, because it's got like that the suit, yeah. the, the uh, Todd McFarlane eyes, you know, like the big ones. Mm-hmm. And it's he's got the he's got a cool build for Spider-Man because he is like so thin and lanky, right? right? So when he's he does look convincing, like that he could be that agile and do all this stuff. And obviously Tom Holland because he can physically do all that stuff. Yeah, he can do the flips and everything. He does a lot of that stuff. So yeah. Yeah, his first this, to the Tony Stark suit that he made him is, I think, is awesome. But it it's, yeah. it has like these unnecessary things. But I know what they were doing. Like, if it has like those kind of those black borders and everything. Mm-hmm. But it's like you're like you have to remember it's like Iron Man made this, so right. it's going to have like different features, right? So it's cool. That one's awesome because it's a really classic looking. Mm-hmm. But it's you know it didn't. Yeah. It's not. It, then he makes his own. And it's like all black and stuff. It's kind of cool. The Iron Spider ones, it's that's like, I that's when he's basically Iron Man Junior because I think does does everything. Yeah. Right. So that's what's cool about how he's got all of his toys taken away from him now, and he had to just does it himself. So he you can see it at the end of that last movie. There's like a sewing, uh, machine on his table and like the fabrics there. So it's like, oh cool, we're back to that. Like he made his own thing. Yeah. With more experience now, that's why it doesn't look like the sweatsuit he's wearing in the other one because right. that's what a fourteen year old would do. That's what I would do too, because I wouldn't be yeah. able to figure it out. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, he's a genius, you know. Yeah, so he's exactly. figured this out now. Yeah, exactly. No, I, honestly, like I like all the suits and all the movies. the 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 problem I have with the uh, Tony Stark ones or the Iron Man ones, they're just they're too overpowered. Like he has so much. They're they're like super suits, and he also has powers of his own. Like it's kind of overkill. I mean, so, granted, in the scenarios he needs that stuff, and it works out. They make it make sense. But well, they, like if too much all the st- all the features that it has, like the the uh, what does he call her Karen, like the AI, yeah, in it, Karen, yeah, um, they, those were like it's cool because they're kind of written, like the they're not the movie isn't written around those; those are written into what like it's you know what I mean? Where um, it's cool because it's 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 like a way of saying he's not ready for all of this shit yet because he like um, hacks it. Right. And then it's like, doesn't do what he needs it to do. Cause he doesn't know how to use it yet. So that's, a, that's like another thing showing him. I like how he gets the suit taken away and that when then he has to figure it out and he's right. back to his like nothingness, which is cool. I think that's why it's neat that that suit was like super overpowered and stuff. Cause it's like a way of showing like, he's not ready for this yet. He still is a clumsy kid. He's not like he gets bit by the spider and all of a sudden is this serious guy who, who can just knows how to be a superhero. He's just a dumb, clumsy kid. Well, not right. dumb. He's a genius, but 
Yeah. No, but I got, I understand. Yeah, exactly. Um, just to, to kind of like, it, we'll move through the different movie care, the movie versions, but to go back to the Tobey Maguire one, um, obviously you're grew up, you're a musician, you're playing in bands. Let's talk about the music from those movies, because I think one of my favorite things. About, oh, it's, I mean, come on. They got one of the best composers. No, I, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not talking about, yeah, the, the Danny Elfman music's great. I think all the composers that we get throughout the movies, Danny Elfman, we get Hans Zimmer with amazing Spider-Man. We get, Michael yeah. Gia, Gia, Giacchino with uh, the homecoming movies or the, the home movies. Yeah. Whatever uh, you call those. <laughs> what I want to talk about is in Spider-Man two. I think it's the best song by a rock band in any superhero movie vindicated by dashboard confessional. Do you have any thoughts on vindicated on dashboard confessional? Have you ever played or met that band? Like what, yeah. what's, what's your take I, on the song? I yeah. actually completely forgot that that's in that. It, it's like on the, yeah. it's like in the credits when the credits yeah. roll, there's yeah, like yeah. all these like early two thousands, like rocks hit. I think there's like, like a Nickelback song or something in there. Nickelback too, is, is on is the it? first one. It's, uh, yeah. Hero is it's not the, Nickelback. With, it's the singer. Yeah. It's with like a collab. Right. I remember that. Yeah, oh, yeah with, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. that's right. Dashboard confessional is in that one. <laughs> yeah. And I just remember, I guess it's weird because it was just at the time when it's happening. I'm like, what the hell is this song doing in this movie? <laughs> like at the, when the credits are rolling, cause I'm expecting to hear like a score. Right. You know right. what I mean? With like a superhero movie like that, you're expecting to hear the, the whole symphony. Like yeah, the, the superhero thing. sounds. Yeah. But yeah then right. there's just, then there's just some rock music playing. Uh, yeah. We've, we've, I've done shows at Dashboard Confessional before over the years. Yeah. Um, actually, ironically, not since I've been in BFS. Um, but in other bands, like dude, in like festivals and stuff. And yeah. I've met that guy Chris before. He's really nice. Yeah. It's really cool. No, I mean, yeah. That song though, like if you listen to the lyrics or read the lyrics, it's about it's about Spider Man. Like it's a Is rock it? song. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like it's was it, it was written ri- for the movie? It was written for the movie. He got oh, that was s- like a hit. Yeah, he got to see the movie. They sent in the movie and he wrote the song after he watched the movie. And if no you listen way. to it, like, you know, my hope dangles on a string, like, yeah, I had no redemption. Idea. Yeah. Like it's, I just remember that song being on the radio. <laughs> I remember seeing the the music video, which I guess they don't do music videos anymore, but, uh, <laughs> but I remember that video. Cause the video was like so perfectly done with the story of the movie. I was like, this is such a great, I, well, I like makes the song. A lot of sense yeah. I really had no idea that it was written for it. And I think it's like, honestly, not, not that a ton of superhero movies that ha- nowadays have rock music or they, if they do, they're like, like needle drop, like older music. Yeah. But well, like an Guardians original of the Galaxy song. is like based around that. <laughs> right. Right. But like a ri- music that was written by, you know, at that time, a, a current band for yeah. a movie. I think it's the best one. It's one of my favorite songs anyway, but I, it's just such, such a great song. And it well, perfectly you just taught me something about that. I had yeah. no idea. Well, glad. Yeah. So that was the second one. Second movie. Yeah. The first second movie one. had a song called hero and it was by, yes. Nickelback's Chad and, Kroger and, and Josie Scott from Saliva. Saliva. Right? That's who go. it was. Yeah. 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 Saliva. Yeah. I remember that video. It's terrible. They're yeah. like playing on a rooftop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no offense to, the, to those bands. Those oh, yeah. Artists, it's not, but they didn't direct it. They're just, they're but, just playing. <laughs> it's not one of my favorite songs either. I remember yeah, I, I liked just remember it at even the time, at the, but at yeah. The, well, at the time, I even thought it looked cheesy because it's like they're trying to, on a music video budget, yeah make it look like this multi-million dollar movie that just had all this money put into it. And like, and he's like, Spider-Man's in it. Like there's clips of him, and it's like really odd editing. I remember that, like seeing him like land on the building where they're at or like jump off of it or. <laughs> yeah. They're just splicing clips of the movie in, into the video, but then trying to right? animate yeah. it to the scene that they're, cause they're like on a rooftop or something. Right. Yeah. And then uh some 41 had a song on the first movie also. Which I don't, yeah. There it's like right after the hero song finishes in the credits, they go to it. And I'm, and it's, it's not one of their hit songs, but it was like, it that's was different. Motiv- Cause I actually know those guys at this point. Okay. So now that's odd that I don't know that. Well, that's cool. Yeah. They have a song. Uh, I can't remember what it's, I, I it's kind of in my head, but I can't think of what it's called, but uh, it's like something like, this is what we live for. If they said that part in the song. Um, anyway, that I thought that that's, was pretty cool. All right. I'll have to look that up. At that time, you know, because like is it they, like is it like old school rap rock? Some forty one. There is, Not yeah. Like there's metal. <laughs> there's some of that. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's got to be the yeah, Beastie Boys like, thing they would do. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, I'm in. I gotta listen to that. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, one of my other favorite moments from those movies is uh, this is you know obviously you know Jason very well. He's in yeah. the Jarrett Ray Reddick band with you also. Uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage appearance as Bonesaw McGraw. Yeah, uh, because yeah. 
with with me and Jason, our podcast, which is, uh, you know, let's freaking do this. Before every podcast, when I ask Jason, "Are you ready to go?" he always says, "Bone saws Bone ready." Saws ready. <laughs> so that will live on forever because Jason won't let it die. But he that always looks a- like he has such a hard time saying that. Like every time I watch it, it looks like he's having <laughs> such a hard time just saying that line. Yeah. Bone saws ready. <laughs> but to get Macho Man Randy Savage in that movie, it, obviously that's part of the part of how he becomes Spider Man because he it's enters cool, this it, Yeah. Yeah. Like they 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 went right to the thing. However, do you remember do you remember the name of the actual wrestler that he that in the uh, Amazing Fantasy fifteen that he wrestles for that know. same thing? It's Crusher Hogan. Crusher. Oh, that's right. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I have heard that before. <laughs> and you yeah. just see like one quick frame of him. It's just like <laughs> right. some big bald dude or something. <laughs> so um, going back to what I was talking about with some forty one, our producer Brittany, she found the title. It's called What We're All About. Oh, I see. It's a Sum 41 song. So uh, I, that's not like title like seems familiar. Yeah. Maybe so, I do know that song. Yeah. So go, well, let's check that out after the show. But yeah. uh, anyway, like I think the villains are pretty good in the, the original Spider-Man movies. You know, we get introduced to obviously Green Goblin with Norman Osborn. We get I, I mean, Ock. that's great casting. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. I mean, for for those first two, for sure. Yeah. I mean, um. Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin's awesome, and I and I'll talk all the shit in the world in those movies. But man, he's so good at that role, even with the awful script he was handed. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, he's he does the whole thing. I and I get it's campy and it's kind of supposed to be right, like that's what Sam Raimi does. But right, they're showing those like flight tests earlier in the movie because it, yeah, it's it's obviously the suit comes from Oscorp because it's their military contracted or, or almost contracted to do the thing why they would invent that for the military i have no idea it seems incredibly impractical um but on top of that like sure i get the flight suit and the glider but why on earth would Oscorp sink like three hundred thousand dollars into a goblin helmet to try and sell that to the military yeah you know what i'm saying like the rest of the suit sure i understand but the helmet well, like yeah. why on earth who would have approved that like when they were like designing this flight suit like and let's just make it look like this cartoon goblin right <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense at all um but yeah he's and they even sort of address that when he comes back in no way home like the first thing yeah. he does is just smash the helmet right smash away. The helmet, yeah <laughs> well it's like why would you hide his face his he has like such an emotive face why right. would you hide it you know yeah i mean willem dafoe a lot of people thought like really wanted him to play Joker because he kind of has that Joker face just yeah. as a, he know, can, he can make person. the crazy face. He can, right. Do it. Right. Um, is there anything else from those first movies that you want to, you want to touch on that we haven't mentioned? I mean, obviously Spider-Man three has venom. It has Sandman. It has, Spider-Man 3 has too many problems yeah. to even get into. Like, and it's all rushed too. They're like, they yeah. throw the Sandman thing in there. And like, but before you even get to know who that character is, he's already supposed to have this like arc. Where it's like he's not all that bad. He's doing it for his daughter. I'm like, yeah. oh god, um, what's his name? Uh, Harry Osborne. Uh, yeah, James, James Franco is Harry Osborne. Like his like stupid little surfboard. Yeah, <laughs> like they're just like well, and I get. I mean, at that point, they're like, we already know we can't just have him wear the same suit again. So just get, like, I don't know where he, who built that for him. Like, I get that he runs the company or something, or or it has like some sort of high shares in it, but. Is he going to someone and like, hey, by the way, I inject myself with a crazy serum. So can you just build me like a million dollar thing so I can go kill Spider Man? You know what I mean? Like they just don't think of these things. Like, yeah. Or was it in that like vaults behind yeah. the brick wall? Or yeah, something? because or? you know his dad had all that stuff and he discovered it at the end of. Oh, the so it's already. Movie. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so it right. already all existed. Okay, right. all right, yeah. I'll give him that. Right, and but then you know, remember in Spider Man Three, he gets amnesia in the early on in the movie. Which, oh yeah. Cause he gets knocked in, like hits a pipe or something. Yeah. Well, doesn't make any chasing sense. Chasing Spider-Man through, he is flying through, you know, Manhattan or wherever. And he, yeah, he hits a pipe and which is crazy. Him, yeah. And then he gets knocked out and has amnesia. They're supposed to be pretty evenly matched. Like that's kind of the point. Um, right. So when he like falls and crashes and hits that, or hits his head on that pipe, like he already, Spider-Man already did that, like or in a different movie and he was fine. Yeah. Exactly. Speaking of Spider Man, this Peter Parker. <laughs> That's what I wanted. I want you to mention. Uh, yeah. So Peter Parker had such a big impact on your life that you named your son after him, right? I did. This is this is Pete. 
he's going to bed right now though, so I'm gonna hand him back over. <laughs> yeah, good to see you, Pete. Say bye. Bye bye. Oh, he's being shy. Good night, <laughs> monkey. Okay. Love you, Pete. But yeah, his, <laughs> your son's middle name is Parker. Yes. So, yeah. well, so my wife's dad's named Pete. Okay. So it was like, and and he had, he grew up with like five sisters, and he has three daughters, and he has a bunch of granddaughters. So, uh, I'm like, we have to name this kid Pete. And I've always, I've, I've always had like, I didn't ever, I didn't always know I was gonna have a kid, but I was like, yeah. if I ever have a kid and it's a dude, I want to name him Peter Parker for Los I, I like knew that, so I was like, oh my god, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, that's and like who cares about middle awesome. names? It's great. No, it's perfect. I mean, I go by my middle name, so I care, but I understand. Oh, you do? Like, that's, yeah, I do. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, uh, but, but yeah, no, that's that's super cool. I remember that's what I found out last time I talked to you. I was like, oh, that's we've got to talk about that on the podcast. Yes, also. There, he, there he was. That was Peter Parker. There aren't too many people that name their kid after a superhero character. So, yeah, very cool. Well, it's also like when you just look at his name, it's just Pete Felicetti. So, oh, right, yeah, <laughs> right. He's not going to get made fun of too much. No, but then like in the first day of school, if they do the full name, it'll be oh, kind of yeah. cool. Like the kids oh, that yeah. know, the, the kids that know are going to be like, yeah, that's, that's a cool kid. Yeah. You get that out of the way when they're like kids. So it's cool. Yeah, and then, right. <laughs> then they'll just know them through school. Uh, that's going to um, work yes. out well for him. Yeah. So as far as um, like other, like other villains, like I, I know what they were going for when he wanted to have a, what's Topher Grace, like cast as, Eddie Brock, but it's like it's kind of the wrong thing, like because they were going for like a he wanted it to be an equal mm -hmm. to Peter Parker, right? And so that's they're, they're right, and then that's why it's this whole thing, but right. it's kind of not the point. Speaking of missing the point of Venom, Sony again entirely missed the point. So that wait, movie, wait, let's is, well, there's oh, two of them. Have you have you seen both of them? No, I saw the first one. Um, and then I was, it was so bad that I didn't even entertain the thought of ever seeing the second one. So I watched the second one just this past weekend because it's the only Spider-Man related movie that I hadn't seen was Venom Let There Be Carnage, which came out in 2021. Yeah. Um, I watched it over the weekend. If you if you like Venom, it's okay. If you don't like Venom, it's okay. Like it's not terrible. Like it's like not the, the first worst. one you're saying? Yeah, if you like the first, like it, if you I did not the first one. <laughs> I mean, it made like 800 and something million dollars at the box office. So There's a lot well. of things that make that much money that I don't like. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I like the M, the Eminem, Eminem song, Venom. If it, you've, yeah, oh, that's, that's a good song. I it's mean, just, it's, it's a silly it's just, song. Yeah. It's a, it was, it was, it was a, Sony has this like un, unstoppable power to just fuck things up. So like, I basically, they're like, oh my God, the MCU is so hot right now. And right. Spider Man is so popular right now. We need to crank out something right now that we can because we can't technically use this kid as Spider-Man. We don't want to like muddy a sequel to the other two. What's the next thing that people will know? I don't know, Venom. And they just whipped up this terrible movie where it's like, th to me, the cool, like the entire point of Venom is the fact that like his, so, so far it's always been Peter Parker, you know, Spider-Man, like, mm -hmm beating on street level thugs and just kind of like just saving the day for, for like the neighborhood and like right. sort of all of these things. And he would usually, I mean, he'd get his ass kicked a lot, but he would, he's clever and he'd, he'd have the upper hand and, and his spider sense would always save him. I mean, that's always what would end up happening. Right. Like, and he would just know be in tune with it. Right. So the second they get, it's a, a physically bigger person who then hates Spider-Man because uh, in the comic, he's like, Eddie Brock is like a writer, um, and he would write like this, like sort of like journal, well, like not like a journal, like he would get published, I think, and it was like all these like stories, and they were called like venomous stories or some some something cheesy like that. But I think Spider Man like sort of exposes him as a fraud, something like that. So I forget, I forget exactly what happened. Anyway, so Eddie Brock has hatred for Spider Man at the same time that the the suit, the symbiote suit, bonded with Peter Parker. So when Peter Parker rejects the symbiote suit. The symbiote itself hates Peter Parker, and it also amplifies. It makes it Peter Parker is strong. It made strong stronger, right? It did all these right. things. It made arrogance more arrogant, right. like all, all of these, all of these things. So you take this suit that hates Peter Parker and now has all of his memories and his powers, and then bonds itself to someone that hates Peter Parker. It amplifies that, so he's like maniacally hates him. Perfect. Yeah. And can do everything he can do. So he has to, he can't rely on how strong and agile he is. He has to always outsmart him. Mm -hmm. That's the coolest villain you can give to a person 
that you, to, to to a superhero because it's like he he has to be ahead of it all the time in order to ever stand a chance. Yeah. So then when the Sony makes this movie about Venom, it's like hey, it's just some alien that just looks like this, and that's it. Nothing to do with Spider Man whatsoever. So yeah. I that really is such a letdown. For, and it, he looks cool. Like, they got him big, and it looks like he should yeah. and everything. Yeah. But talk about missing the point. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's part of, you know, obviously Sony owns the rights to Spider-Man and all the characters movie-wise, but then they have this deal with the MCU. I mean, they can do their own thing if they want to, but they're kind of, it's kind of like they don't want to, like, they have this MCU deal going, and they want to keep that going, but they also want to have something of their own. That's why they have this, they call it the SSU, which is the Sony Spider-Man universe, which right now doesn't have any Spider-Man in the universe. You've got two Venom movies. You've yeah. got Morbius. You've got well, I like, actually, saw that. Okay. I, Morbius is not as bad as people say it is, but I just the, didn't prob- see it. the problem with it is it doesn't have like, there's not a lot. There's not really any ties to Spider-Man. It's, well, the, like, I don't want to spoil it. There's stuff at the end. that's you can ties. Fix- well, the but, thing is, like, I, if I'm gonna, I watched the trailer for all these movies. If, I, if yeah. a, a trailer is supposed to entice me to see it, and that I just saw that, and I was like, this, I, I don't care. And then even I just saw that Craven the Hunter one. I'm like, I, yeah. this looks like the most boring movie yeah. I've ever heard of. Well, <laughs> what they're doing is they're it, the problem that they're doing is they're making these villains anti heroes. Like in all these movies, yeah, right. Because like, Venom they, is not they, the villain, right? Right. Right, but then they have to because they're the central focus of the movie. Right, but then they, they sort have of have to, to do that. Yeah, the, the, but then eventually, that their hope is that they'll they're going to build up all these characters. They're going to build up build up Venom because there's going to be a third Vil- Venom movie, which I think is now going to come out in February of twenty twenty. Wait, I'm sorry, no, it's uh July of twenty twenty four. Craven the Hunter has been moved to August because of delays the strike. with strike. Yeah. And they're also coming out with a Madam Web movie that comes out next like, year. Talk about something I don't care about. Oh my god, they dragged that out in that cartoon from the '90s. Do you remember yeah. that? Like the last season or so was right. like all of that, and, I'm, and then I was like clocked out. I'm like, I can't. Who? How do you expect a kid to care about any of that? Well, or they, anyone. Their idea is to to put out these movies and eventually introduce a Spider Man, which we're not even sure who is who's it going to be. I mean, it I could think just be a whole other person. I think it's going to be Miles Morales because I think oh sure once the that would be that would actually be the one smart thing they could do at this point. I think that's what they're going to do because they're going to make a live action Miles Morales. I would say in the next five years, they've got the Spider Verse ending potentially the next couple of years. I want to ask you about that. Have you have you watched the Spider Verse movies? I saw the first one on a plane okay. when I was half asleep, wow. and I actually thought there was something wrong with the screen because of how choppy that movie looks. <laughs> It is cool. It's like a cool artistic thing, yeah. but not knowing that I was kind of annoyed the whole time. So I'm like, there's something going on, or like something wrong with this screen. Um, I liked it. It's just, just, again, it was like a really complicated story that right. had really nothing to do with the Spider-Man that I grew up in love. I think yeah. it is cool that there's another one. Mm-hmm. Like Miles Morales is, is an interesting character, but it's basically the same thing. Just rewritten. Yeah. And he has, he has slightly different powers. Like he can go invisible but and he has it's like, not so much the punch. powers. It's more about the story where the it's story. Like, you're right. Yeah. His, uh, it's, it's a family tragedy yeah. that he has to grow from and, 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 you know, he has to learn how to deal with and cope with. And he to sort of takes on the responsibility because of that, you know, so that stuff's all the same. He does have different powers, right? But it, it's, 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 I would think that would be the best move for Sony. Yeah. It would be to do that because then it's like something at least a little fresh for them in, in within the world of Spider-Man and they'll get a lot more people interested in it. Yeah. And t- to me, the thing is, I, I think it would be nice to have a live action Peter Parker be a mentor cool, to yeah. Miles Morales. The problem is I don't think Tom Holland because he looks so young, he's only like 25, 26, 27. Like he, him being a mentor doesn't really make sense. Andrew Garfield would be that a could, great mentor. Like, okay. So there's two ways. Yes. There's two ways to look at that where they have are, Andrew Garfield that, yeah. or either one of them is like, as like a 40 year old Spider-Man who's yeah. like mentors this kid, or you do like a, like an Obi-Wan Darth Vader thing. Like he tries to mentor him, but fails. Like he, like if you do it with Tom Holland, it's like, he just, he does he he wants to do it but like messes up right that'd be an interesting story i don't know i just off the top of my head like i don't i think they want to try and separate from the mcu though 
I mean, Sony wants to make all their own money. Right. And not well, have to do. share it they with do. Disney. They do. Yeah. So that I'm sure that's probably what's going to be because I don't think in, uh, Marvel in the ter- with Spider-Man is fighting so hard to just kind of keep Peter Parker that I think they'd be like, all right, fine. You can have this Spider-Man. We're going to have this Spider-Man. Do your thing. Maybe they'll cross because of this whole yeah. d- interdimensional d- <laughs> whatever stuff they've been doing. Get a lot of the out of hand because now they can just solve anything with the multiverse. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping something happens that sort of closes it off and and kind of reel it back. But it was a really cool movie, like the two movies that deal with it, the Doctor Strange one and yeah, and Spider Man. So, um, yeah, those are sort of my thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we touched on a couple things. Uh, I would say so across the Spider Verse, which is the second movie which came oh, out, right. I didn't see that one yet. You, you need to see that because you're going to, I think you're going to like that movie. Now, granted, Peter Parker, you know, there's like, and there's, there's many versions of Peter Parker. Yeah. And there's many versions of Spider Man. It's, it's like, honestly, it's like an overload because like it's, it's, you know, Spider Man from video games and Spider Man from, you know, there, there's a, there's literally oh, a, a character I, called P- Peter Parked Car. There's a parked <laughs> car who's Spider Man. So it's like, I think everything. the point is to sort of be overwhelming with it for that yeah, movie. Because no, I is. bet it has something to do with how they, navigate through right. the, whatever issue their the plot line yeah. revolves around. But I, I think that um that the way they've taken that character and the all the versions of the character, it's so well done. And like the first movie is literally a comic book come to life. And oh I, yeah. I, like, That's it, what I'm saying. Now that looks, I know yeah. that it's supposed to look like that, it's right. cool. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like one of the most creative things I think I've ever seen. I've I've told people who don't like superheroes like you should just watch this just to like see it. Like it's Oh, it's yeah, just it's, like, it's, it's just a cool amazing. movie. Yeah. And yeah, I do it, like how there's two versions of Peter Parker. One is like perfect and the other one's a big piece of shit. Yeah, right. That's neat. Right. Like that's interesting. Yeah. And then that, you know, he's sort of how Miles like looks up to that perfect version of him, but is actually mentored by the <laughs> the, the right. asshole, which is a really cool. I think that was like my favorite part of the story is the two of them mm-hmm. sort of interacting. Yeah, and you get more of that in this the sequel, and then there's obviously more characters like Spider Man yeah. 2099 is thrown in there, and you get a bunch of you know different versions of the character that maybe you have varying degrees of knowledge of. I think you probably have a better understanding than probably most people do. But, yeah, uh, I think you'll really enjoy that movie. The first movie made uh, you know did very well at the box office, but it also won an Academy Award. The second movie has made a lot of money at the box office this summer, so it's. And it's supposed to be on digital next week. So maybe if you want to check it out that way, or eventually it'll be. If it's next somewhere. week, I'll just, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, it's, it's worth checking out for sure. Awesome. Uh, it's, we talked about multiverse stuff. Let's talk about no way home. I think that is one of, to me, and I want to get your thoughts on it, but like when I first saw that movie, I kind of had an idea that this stuff was going to happen, but I didn't know for sure. And I didn't want to know for sure. But like when I saw like Andrew Garfield's character on screen, I was like, wow, they, they really did it. Like, and then obviously Toby Maguire comes in later to have those three Spider-Man 20 years of the character on screen in one movie in this amazing story. I, I think it's one of the, my, it's one of my favorite movies ever. W- what are your thoughts on no way home? I like it a lot. I, I, um, I, it was that thing like, yeah, I knew, I knew they were going to show up. If they didn't, I would have not, been bothered at all if they didn't right. show up but it was they they showed up they had way more screen time than i thought they were gonna even have and it was fine like it it was like it actually served a purpose um and it was cool like it actually like i like how they had a sort of like they showed up and were like all right we're just gonna we're gonna do what we do we're just gonna figure this issue out and make it all work for ever because it, it affected all of them so I think it's a great movie and I think it's cool how at the end it's like you have to see he has to grow up, which is neat because he's been a sort of this doofy kid for, for however many movies he's been in at this point. So now it's yeah. like he finally has to grow up. So we've gotten that full spectrum of him. And that's my favorite thing about the movie is that you, he, the, where he ends up at the end of it, he has to make this really big decision and he does cause he has to do the right thing because he's, he learned that and it's, you know, they rehash the line which is cool. They did it in a different way. You know, the, with great power, there was also kind of So yeah. that's really cool. How they, how they did that and why they did that and what purpose it serves. And that, that's sort of the, how that's basically the thesis of the entire movie. Cause yeah. at the end of it, he has the power to 
make it right. And it's a huge responsibility to do so. And it, it all to his detriment. And he does it, you know, he does what he thinks the right thing to do is. So I think overall, it's a great movie. Having the other two spider men there was pretty cool. Um, and and yeah, they were. I feel like they're they're the three of them together. The chemistry was really cool. Like it was neat to see, yeah. and and it was very cartoon like to me, but in a good way. It's like something that would have happened on that cartoon, but like in a real life application of it. Yeah. No. I, exactly. And I, you know, I think the thing about that, what I liked about having the other two Spider Men take part is they weren't just cameos. You know, like they're in they're a part of the story. A good chunk of the movie. And they also it also gave you like for Andrew Garfield's version of Spider Man, the amazing Spider Man, it gave you some closure given what happened. I mean the amazing Spider Man two is is not anybody's favorite Spider Man movie. Yeah. But the death of Gwen Stacy, I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, they actually killed you know I knew they were gonna do it. I I I Emma could Stone, tell like that Hall movie, I knew it was gonna okay. happen. Just because with the second they started talking about the Green Goblin, I was like, I know they're doing this. Okay. Um, and then especially how she's dressed in that last scene before it happens, it's exactly what she's wearing in the comic book wow. when she dies, like okay. to a T. So I'm like, oh yeah, it's coming. Um, but yeah, that was cool. That little moment there where yeah, and I didn't. That's the thing. Like it, it's a, it's again. This is MCU always finds great directors and great editing and all that stuff compared to the other movies a lot because so much is happening at that point that I even forgot about any of that. So it's like the fact that um, she falls, he goes to get her and then the, the goblin like hits Peter Parker and he's out of the way and she's still falling. I'm like, Oh yeah. I'm like, Holy shit, what's going to happen. And then you see him dive after it's like, they set it up perfectly where you're not even thinking that's going to happen. Yeah. Cause you're so involved in what's going on. And then he dives down. And you're like, Oh yeah, he's going to catch her. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And he does. Yeah. I mean, the, the fact that he's able to catch, you know, Tom Holland's MJ, like that kind of gives him closure, but also, and it also really showcases his, his incredible acting skills. Yeah. Cause that's like, he didn't even say anything like, right. you know, it's just like in his, it's really, yeah, it's that, that part's really cool. And that's an example that move that whole end sequence at the statue of Liberty is an example that you can jam a bunch of villains there. You just have to do it right. 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 You know, like he's basically yeah. fighting the Sinister Six. Like it's not all of them, you know, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's kind of, that's like the idea, like yeah. all of the dudes like together yeah. that they have to like figure out how to systematically take down and like, what like pin them with that universe thing. Yeah. <laughs> that like sends it back. But yeah, that it's, it is a really cool movie. It's, it deals with like an incredibly complex subject that's like really bizarre and out there, but it's done tastefully somehow. That's my yeah, take on it. No, it's very well done. And I do like how, like I said, it gives us closure for the Andrew Garfield version, but also it kind of gives you like, well, they could do amazing Spider-Man three tomorrow if they wanted to, like, you know, you could bring him back. You certainly could do Spider-Man four, you know, after with Tobey Maguire, if they really wanted to, which they were well, going to do Spider-Man four, they were yeah. going to do two more of the amazing Spider-Man before they decided to pivot and, you know, work with Disney on do the right thing and do the right I thing. I, right. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I mean, now, now that you have, you kind of, now that you have done the right thing, you can go back and like, that's what I'm saying. So, you can so that, that stuff. You can I know I, I wish, and I know it's not, it doesn't make any sense. I'm not the people that are dealing with the uh, accounting with Sony yeah. and, and Disney, but it would be like, just let Disney have Tom Holland as Spider-Man and Sony can have Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire all they want, do whatever they want with those movies and just let him continue to be Spider-Man here. Cause it's, they're going to need him for a few more movies. Yeah. And to not have Spider-Man in, in the Marvel cinematic universe is absurd. Cause he's like the flagship character. He's the number one character. It's yeah. You know, for DC Batman is the number one character and then like Superman's yeah. next, but like for, for Marvel Spider-Man's number one, like, yeah. And that's like how what's could amazing. you not have him? Yeah, that's what's amazing about the MCU is they built the MCU on B and C level characters and they elevated characters like Captain America and Iron Man and made them as big as like Batman and Superman, which is amazing that they were able to like do that. But then they still had someone like Spider-Man, their their A number one guy. They didn't really have access to him until, you know, 2016 or whatever. Whenever yeah, Civil I mean, War that's that's what yeah. I that's what I knew that he was in the right hands after the with the MCU. They can make me give a shit about thor you know what i mean like 
I remember when that first movie came out, I only just went to see it because I'm like, oh, cool, they did Captain America, and they already are implying that they're going to tie in that first wave of the Avengers. Right. So I was like, all right, well, this story, I got to see I mean, I have to see it if I'm going to, at least, but I'm not going to like it. And I actually did. Yeah. So it's, well, at least at the time, you know, for what they were sort of building to. But yeah, yeah it's cool. No, I mean, I, I mean, Thor is a great character in the Avengers and like, yeah, growing up, I knew who Thor was because of adventures and babysitting, you know, like that was <laughs> Thor got a big run in that movie. And it's, it's obviously a joke, but they elevated, you know, all these characters. And then now you add Spider-Man and you add the best version of Spider-Man and, you know, you've got, you know, all these amazing stories that, you, that you've read in the comics that are just waiting to be kind of adapted and brought to this to yeah the silver and, screen and or the TV. they've so far made it a point to like want to do it a little bit di- like not different for the sake of different but right different things that they haven't explored yet you know what i mean like different villains and not just gonna go for the big ones like we don't you know we already did the lizard and doc ock and green goblin and and so now there's this but there's a whole other catalog they can choose from so i'm excited to see where they go with it yeah me too and especially with like with spider-man i just i just don't know like it's Right now, we're, I mean, obviously, we talked about this, the Sony universe. They're going to continue to make these movies with the villains who are not really villains in the movies. Eventually, you've got to have a Spider-Man in your, in your Spider-Man universe. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's coming. And I think you, I think you might have hit it on the head that it would be Miles. Miles Morales. Yeah. yeah. That would Very be cool. cool. So, so speaking of, of the movies, so Spider-Man is, the number two highest grossing franchise of all time, just Spider-Man by himself. He like Spider-Man movies, which those movies also include uh, the Venom movies and Morbius and stuff. He's made, he's generated 10.4 billion just Dang. by himself. Now, number one, of course, is the MCU. Sure. Uh, they have 29 billion uh, yeah, out of their 32 of movies. Yeah. But like star, like Spider-Man has made more money than star Wars. Just barely made wow. more money than Harry Potter, James Bond, Fast and Furious, the Batman movies, the DC Universe, X Men. So, you know, like seriously, Spider Man is like legit the number one character in all of comics and the top superhero. And I think that's yeah. that's pretty incredible for a little guy from Queens who's <laughs> now the you know the number one superhero. That's that's yeah. a pretty that's a pretty cool story unto itself. It is like the, even yeah because even powers. like Stan Lee bringing it up like he had a lot of pushback. They're like, yeah. you know, you know, th- th- those are the sidekicks, the teenagers, you know, the the kids that the orphans, like because he's an orphan, right? The the orphan teenagers, like the not the main focus, and like the publishers didn't want it, nothing to do with it. The even the people, I didn't even think Steve Ditko, Ditko was like, I don't think this is the right move, but I'll draw it, you know, like yeah, um, yeah, it's it's that's a nice that's a nice uh summary of it right even the story itself is sort of this this underdog thing where yeah it ends up becoming very powerful yeah it's pretty incredible um so one of the last things i wanted to show you so i i did like my top so i ranked the 10 spider-man movies that have spider-man in them i'm not including venom and i'm not including morbius and that kind of sure. stuff uh so here's my uh my spider-man rankings oh you have rankings okay yeah, so i ranked them it might be kind of hard to see but it's no so I, I've got, I got it yeah so no way home is one Okay. I have Across the Spider-Verse, which you have not seen that movie. That's my number two. I really think that movie, I think you're going to enjoy that movie because it's it's very well done. It's not a Peter Parker story, yeah. spoiler, but it's, it's a well done. I didn't done think movie. it was. Yeah, yeah. So so what do you think about this list so far? I'm reviewing. Yeah. Uh, hold on, let me see if I got this right. Okay. Yeah, so I've got... Uh... Yeah, I've got the the Tom Holland movies are all in my top, you know, five or six. Yeah. Yeah. So I would do. Is that what you're asking? Is how, yeah, how yeah. Would no, yeah. Okay. How, how would you how would you rank them? Yeah. All right. So I think I agree with your number one. OK, I'd, I'd probably keep No Way Home at number one. Uh, number two, I'd go Homecoming. Number three, I would go Far From Home. OK, then I would go. Uh, Spider-Man Two. Okay. Then probably the Amazing Spider-Man. Right, so we're up to five now. Yep, near five. Okay. Then I would do um, Spider-Man, like the first one. Yep. Then 
Oh, you know what? I forgot the uh I put I'd put Spider Verse right after Homecoming on okay. that lineup. Um and I can't say anything about the second one yet because I haven't seen it. So this, yeah. is, I mean, this is nine for me, right? And then obviously Dead Last would just in any order, Spider-Man two and 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 uh I'm sorry, Amazing Spider-Man two and Spider-Man three. You can yeah. flip flop those around <laughs> either way. Cause they're like I said, cop out answer equally as bad. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, I agree with that, but I also, in the same breath, I'll say like, I don't like, I like all the Spider-Man movies to a certain degree. Like I, sure, there's like, something even, to watch, even if it's just visually. Yeah. I mean, Spider-Man three has bully McGuire and he's hilarious. Like that, that <laughs> part where he, you know, he's doing the, the, the jazz, you know, dancing at the club and singing or whatever. And he's, you know, tells the it's, waitress, he's like, I know, it's just, I'm you know, that thing, you where, know. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you don't do something, but you're embarrassed for some reason, like some, right, you know, some right. That's what I feel when that's happening. Yeah, because no. really hard. What do people say? It's cringy, right? It's right, cringy. it's cringy. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of that in in the Amazing Spider-Man too, but even less aware of it. Right. But in right. Spider-Man three, at least, I mean, at least I think they know that what they're doing is absurd. Like when he's dancing in the street and, and all. Yeah. You know. So yeah, I, I could see what you're saying. So maybe I would put Spider-Man three above the Amazing Spider-Man two, by like that tiny mar like morsel of a margin. Right. Thank yeah. you. You've you've actually you've you've enlightened me a little bit on that. You're welcome. I'm happy to <laughs> happy to help you out. Um, as we kind of start wrapping up, is there anything yeah. Spider-Man related you want to mention or that we haven't talked about? Um, look, actually, it's one of the first things we did to talk about. It's really cool if you look, and it's it's just this tiny little thing that I think is neat. But look up the original original cover to Amazing Fantasy 15. It was actually drawn by Steve Ditko because mm -hmm. then they had someone else actually pen the cover because Ditko drew the comic okay then they commissioned someone else who I, for, I think ended up drawing other spider-man stuff or did other marvel things it's basically the same cover so it's like a more stuff's going on like it's, it's busier okay and then the what ended up being the actual cover is a little more streamlined and like very like sleek um and i think it's really cool it's just like a nice piece of art i want to try and find a print of that actually to put up somewhere in a, amongst yeah. my things yeah, that those old comic covers are such they are such like great art pieces. Yeah, yeah, it's that's what I said. Like when we were kids, we we went comic cover collecting basically. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean that's what that's what, obviously what that's the most important thing you see. And you, yeah, you, you know, that that really kind of makes makes or breaks the makes or breaks the sale, really, yeah. if it's if it's cool. So uh so maybe one of the last little bits of, of things that I think is neat is if if you uh if anyone here knows or listens to bowling for soup, there's a we have a song called killing them with kindness on our latest album. Yep. And in that, in the music video for it, I'm playing like a superhero who's just like, just all these kind gestures for people. It's right. more of like a superhero, like a Superman, like Incredibles look like the actual thing that I'm wearing. But there's a, we had a, a comic book illustrator named Neil. I and draw the, like there's the actual comic cover of a, like a kid who's holding the comic book in it. And it's so quick. You can hardly see it, but it's, it's me. Um, but it's the amazing fantasy 15 cover and I'm holding my dog instead of the guy. And then, uh, Chris, Gary, and Jared are like the people standing on the buildings, like pointing. Mm -hmm. It's so subtle. I'll have to, I'll email you like the full res, like, uh, co like copy of it. But I think I would, like I would appreciate that, but you know what? I actually have that comic book and I forgot oh. to, I have it. I have the comic <laughs> book. I bought it like several months back and I have it and I, I forgot to bust it out for this episode, but I, yeah. So that's, and so, and there you go. That's another thing like amazing fantasy 15, a different yeah. artist illustrated the cover than actually did the comic book <laughs> direct tie in. Wow. I can't believe I forgot about that. I've been so focused on all the Spider-Man stuff. I was like, yeah. Cause like it's super Rob, right? Is that what you're yeah. calling? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just super Rob, but it's like yeah. the cover is just amazing fantasy 15, but just me. Yeah. It's <laughs> just holding a dog. No, that's, that's so cool. And, uh, before we get out of here, like you're, I don't have that photo, but I do have the photo of you in your Spider-Man oh. uh, gear. Let's talk nice. about that a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, so you got the full costume, I guess, right? I have two of them actually. Of them. So there's one that I bought when I was in college, so I could like pull pranks on people. Yeah. And I did. I would always like. I remember, I, uh, I like ran into a toy store dressed in it fully and like and it was like when the movies were out and like the original movies and i like cleared off a whole shelf of those like silly string web shooters 
and like ran to the to the counter and i was like hurry up i need to get these right now i'm in a big rush there's a lot going on and then i was like oh i don't have my wallet it, like just stuff like that like just messing with people <laughs> i mean spider-man's and, an emergency trying to you, yeah trying to you know be friendly neighborhood guy trying to you know this is before this is before people only did stuff like that so they could film it and put it on instagram reels like we, i was just doing it because they would la make my friends laugh you know yeah. <laughs> like um stuff like that i remember i did like a, a a rock wall climbing challenge in it and one um stupid things right chasing people around on the college campus and being an asshole and <laughs> you know cool. yeah. so that was one and then this is actually the other one i bought because it was like um i, I saw it on like I don't know how it even showed up like things you might like on amazon it was like 30 bucks mm -hmm. and it was this one that looked looks pretty legit and i was like all right oh, yeah. bought it and then it's like it's just i just put it up on i mean i have it and i put like the mask on one of those like foam heads oh yeah, yeah. And just put it on the shelf over there because i just this is so this is in my basement where i have yeah i can keep all my stuff like my studio set right, up in here right oh here. cool <laughs> i like that see yeah i've got it's very similar and it's just right over there yeah. uh you can't really see it though um, but this is like where all my stuff is like all, all the right. records and stuff are up over here. And then like, all oh, my stormtrooper helmets and Darth Vader and all you know, the silly stuff's over there. But yeah, so I've got two of those and that's just a picture of me on Halloween one year wearing a t-shirt over it, like a kid. <laughs> no, that's very cool. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. So Rob, it's been great having you on to talk about Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, any, but... I'll do this anytime. I'm sure we could do a whole second episode. Yeah, no, we def yeah, we definitely could. I I had plenty more to talk about. I can't believe I forgot the comic book that I I bought that comic not we'll too long ago, time. like two three months ago, and I was like, I have it in a box in my closet. And I was like, I'll, I'll bust this out in time. And I just I was so focused on Spider Man, I forgot about that. So Man. next time you're on either this podcast or my Let's freaking do this podcast, we'll definitely yeah. uh, take a look at that and talk about it. That, it'll um, work for either because it's Bowling for Soup related and Spider-Man related. There we go. <laughs> and uh, speaking of Bowling for Soup, you've got some shows coming up pretty soon. You're about to hit the road again. Yeah. Actually, you're going to hit the road with uh, with Jarrett. And I mean, obviously, Jarrett's in both bands. Uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> let's talk about you got some country shows coming up. You're in a country. You're in a country band. You're from. Yeah. Group in Queens. You live in Pennsylvania, but now you're in a country band. What's that uh, like? It's fun. It's different. Yeah. It, it's something it's a, a change of pace and it keeps me sharp. You know, it's, it's made me a better musician and I like it. Jarrett writes great songs. So I knew I was going to like it anyway. So, uh, it's, yeah. it's fun and it's, it's cool to, to be, to be back in a van with like friends and doing it. I mean, obviously the Bowling for Soup thing's great. We all hang genuinely love each other and hang out with each other, but you know, there's something special about doing the van thing and, and, uh, the friendships you make on those trips and, it's been it's been really it's been awesome. It's been a lot of fun, and playing a different type of music that I've never really dove into like that. And growing up as a huge Eagles fan helped. So, um, like the old stuff, like the country stuff. Yeah, but that's cool. it's it's we've been, we've had a really busy summer. I've been this is actually my first two week break since February or March oh, wow. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it's been been a lot of that. Like every weekend, actually, up until this you know the other day i just flew home but yeah then we have a few yeah these shows are coming up in denton and wichita falls which are yeah jared's hometowns right which is cool and then uh we ha we're doing a show in dallas at the granada uh august 26th mm -hmm. and then basically all of september and october bowling for soups out um doing we're doing a tour bringing we're bringing mess and authority zero with us there it is awesome yeah so that's covering most of the u.s um and we're doing two festivals. We're doing Riot Fest on the first run, and then we're doing that When We Were Young Fest on the second run. So it's a busy rest of the summer and fall after my nice little two-week break, and then then I'll have some time off again. And then next year's the, the 30th year, so it's going to be very busy. Yeah, the 30th year of Bowling for Soup. That'll be that'll be amazing. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so this is the Getting Old Sucks Tour. You're going to be all over the country, and then – Y'all are going to be in February. Y'all are going to the UK, right? You're playing yeah, in over February, there. We're doing yeah. the UK. We're going over and we're bringing a less than Jake and uh, a band from Texas called the Vandaliers. Yep. Who are awesome. Yeah. And I know the Jason's Vandaliers. A fan. <laughs> yeah. Jason, my friend, Jason Errol, who is also in Jerry Reddick. So that's, that's really cool for me for one of my best friends to be in my, you know, in a band with the people that are my favorite band. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that never, I mean, Every time I think about that, it's like, wow, is this like real life? But uh, it <laughs> and is. We like Jason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a likable guy. He's pretty he's talented. Great. He plays, he's great. Plays a bunch of instruments. Yeah, he's and he plays 143 different instruments. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but yeah, Very so you got cool. Bowling for Soup coming up. You got you're staying busy, but uh, I would say try to carve out some time and watch uh, across the Spider Verse. I, I, I will. Think, I think you'll I think you'll enjoy it. And there's going to be another one of those movies. There's going to be a third one. They're going to finish the trilogy. Who knows when? It was I'm sure to they out. will. Yeah, everything's yeah, a trilogy to, now, right? Yeah, it was supposed to come out in 2024. Now it's been pushed to unspecified have. date. So yeah, just like everything. Just like everything. <laughs> so, uh, but not Bowling for Soup. Bowling for Soup will be on the road. Jerry Reddick. So catch them. And gonna Rob. be busy. Yeah. Awesome. And it was, yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm glad I was able to do this. This is great. Yeah. No, we we really appreciate having you on. And uh, I, I know you're on social media. Do you want to plug your social media before we get out of here? Sure. Yeah. Just on uh, Twitter or X or whatever it's called now, and uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and Instagram. It's it's just yeah. It's Rob Pending. Very and, cool. Uh, and ode to my old man. Yeah. Yeah. I just never changed it. Plus, we're all still friends. So. <laughs> yeah. Might as well keep it. Yeah. It yeah. works. Well, Rob, we're also on social media here at the Watchers. We're on all of the platforms. And of course, there's a there's a truck going by as I'm talking. We're on Facebook, we're on X or Twitter, we're on uh Instagram, and we're also on Threads. We're at Watchers Basement, so check us out there. And hey, also if you're on social media, please use the hashtag hashtag watchers basement. Really helps us out. We appreciate it. And if you're yeah, if you're watching this now, um do me a favor. If you watch this now on YouTube or or later hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. That really helps us out. We also appreciate that. And Hey, if, if video podcasts aren't your thing, we're also on audio platforms. So check us out on uh, Spotify and Apple podcasts and, you know, give us a five-star rating there too, because uh, we deserve it. And uh, maybe we don't deserve it, but give it to us anyway. We really appreciate you deserve it. it. Yeah. So uh, once again, thanks to Rob for joining us. And uh, so for Rob, this is Justin saying, Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, have a good night. And remember with great power, comes great there responsibility. Must, there must also come great responsibility. There you go. You got the comic one version. You did it better <laughs> than me. So awesome. appreciate it. Thanks, All Rob. Right. We, Thanks yeah. for having me. Have a good night, everybody.